Hey guys, welcome back to the MSR Workshop. I have got another unboxing for you, so I think you'll like this one, so stick around. So today's unboxing is going to be the Atmostack A5M50. This uh, diode laser in here was sent to me by Atmostack to review. I'm actually pretty excited because I have never used or reviewed a diode laser. So this is going to be a first for me. So let's get this box opened and see what we got inside. So opening up this box the first thing you will see is this piece of metal here, which they are telling you to use for underneath your cuts and stuff. Um, best thing you can probably do is purchase a honeycomb bed. It's going to give you the least amount of burning. Here is the laser module and a little bag of goodies. There's some pieces of acrylic in there, some tools, some wrenches. Then looking out here, you've got your aluminum rails. They look to be powder coated aluminum extrusions. And then your top gantry looks to be mostly put together. Uh, your power cord, your USB, which is a printer style USB, which I'd wish they had just done a USB uh, A cable instead of uh, USB B cable, which is typically you'd see on printers, which I, I don't like. Um, so looking this over, putting it together was pretty straightforward. Um, I kind of opened up and looked at it. The pictures in here were not that great. They were kind of small. So I just kind of sort of looked at the bigger pictures and kind of went from there. They do have some screw diagrams so you know which length of screw goes where. Now one mistake that I do talk about a little bit later is once you get the sides and say the front put together is you're going to want to slide the gantry on first before you put the back on otherwise you have to take the lower wheel off of the gantry that kind of keeps it supported so that's one mistake that I did do just because you know I didn't read through it word for word but even though I didn't do it that way it still made it pretty simple to put together So fortunately for me, I have a larger laser, and so one of the nice things about having a larger laser is that I can put this inside my large laser and have it sit on the bed of my large laser, and also can utilize the smoke extraction from my larger laser. But I'm really excited to try this out just because I have not used a diode laser before, and the advantage of having a diode laser like this is it is really portable it doesn't take up a big space and you can move it anywhere or really set it over anything and so if you have a large project that say it's already finished like you know for instance a table that you want to engrave a picture on or a logo on or something like that you can literally pick this up and put it over the top of it and you can see here where I kind of messed up so I had to take some parts off and then I got it straightened out. So while you're finishing watching me put this together, let's run through some of the specs. Now it has big bold letters that says this is a 40 watt laser. That is not correct. That is a 40 watt power supply. This is actually a 5 watt diode and that's the important thing that you're going to want to pay attention to. Engraving area is 440 by 400 millimeters. So you have a pretty large engraving area. This is 0.08 uh, spot size. You have an emergency shutoff knob. You have a reset button on the top. Uh, you have a memory card slot on the top. You have a HDMI cable plug on the side of the thing, which it really doesn't mention anywhere in the directions. So I'm curious about that. 
And last but not least, this is compatible with Lightburn. Included in the package, you've got three business card sizes of birch plywood or some sort of plywood and a measured amount, and they come out to be about two mil thickness. And then you have one piece of clear acrylic that is a three mil acrylic. I would be highly surprised if a diode laser could cut through acrylic. And that's one of the Achilles heels of diode lasers that they have not been known to cut through acrylic. Now, if Atmostack has some magic that they have fixed and it now cuts through acrylic, can do acrylic cutting, that would be awesome. They do claim that you can go up to six millimeters in thickness. Now, what they don't say is how many passes or what power you're gonna to have to do this to get through. I mean, if I'm having to do, I don't know, 40 passes just to get through six mil acrylic, I wouldn't consider that cutting through six mil of acrylic. Um, I know on CO2 lasers, when they give the rating how thick you can cut through, it's usually with one pass. Um, I would be super surprised if this was able to do, you know, a two mil in a single pass. You know, it might be able to do it in one or two millimeters a second, but, you know, you're probably going to get burning with that. Now, the other thing I asked them about is this particular model. This is not the Pro model. Um, this particular model, they, according to them, cannot set up with an air assist. So we'll have to see how good this does if I get a lot of burning, a lot of smoke. I know I'll get smoke just because it's a laser, but we'll see how much flare-ups I get without having an air assist on this. Okay, guys, that was pretty simple to put together. Now, one thing I will point out... The directions aren't that great and I mostly went by the pictures and one thing I did wrong to pay attention to is when you put one of the last sides on you need to slide the top gantry on first and then you can bolt the side on. Um, if you don't do that you actually have to take the bottom uh, roller wheel off and then kind of fit it on and it's just more of a pain so if you slide it on first then bolt your end on you'll be golden. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take this over to my large laser, which already has a honeycomb bed in it. It's also got smoke extraction, so I don't have to worry about the fumes. And we'll just set it in there, and we are going to connect it to light burn. Now, one thing I did while I was waiting uh, to finish this video is I had to order a longer cord. Now, one thing I mentioned earlier is I don't like the fact that it uses a USB style uh, B, which is a printer size connection. So it's going to be the square kind of blocky looking one instead of the typical flat one that you see on the other end of this. So I had to order a longer one. So fingers crossed this is going to work, but I needed a longer one to connect to my computer, which is not close enough for me to reach. And we're going to plug this in the light burn and we're going to try it out and see how it does. So all right, guys, so we've got this set up in my bed of my larger laser. And so we're going to go ahead and plug it in, connect it to Lightburn. And I've already downloaded a ramp test from Etsy. So we're going to give that a shot and see how it does. Okay. Now, these are the spacers that they send along to set up the height. So you actually just lower this guy down. Lower that all the way down until it's touching. And now you have the correct height for your laser. So let's go ahead and open light burn. Next, we are going to go to laser, hit devices, find my laser, and hit next. And in theory, this should work. So it's giving me this one. We're going to hit add device. And actually, this is a 440 by 400 bed. And hit next. Now we can have it home front and left, which I think is where most of these dialed lasers home from. And 
This one does because there is a limit switch on that front left hand side. So we're going to hit next and hit finish. And OK. One little trick you have to do is once you add your device to Lightburn, you actually need to exit out of Lightburn or restart Lightburn and click on it and it should recognize it. So now let's go ahead and drop our little test file in here. Now also one of the beauties of having this here on my big laser is because my big laser has a light burn camera set up. Now this isn't going to be exact because the distance is a little bit different, but at least it will get this on the right spot. Now let's go ahead and frame this. Okay, guys, let's take a look at the results. So, kind of interesting. Your bottom stuff down here was almost non-existent. So this is about 11 millimeters per second at 20% power. And this is, remember, this is only a five watt diode laser, so it's really not doing anything until we get to a slower about six millimeters a second. I mean, we're seeing just something down there. So most of the time, so anywhere in this 20% power range, eh, it's okay. 30, you start to get a little darker, 40% power. 50% power is where you really start to see some nice lines. This does not have any air assist, but there's not really any scorching, so I'm pretty impressed with it. Now, here we had our 100% power at two millimeters a second. And if we flip it over to the back, that one is the only one That actually cut through and this is only two mil plywood so I would say you're not going to do a whole lot of cutting with this because you're going at about two millimeters a second at a hundred percent power so pretty darn slow so let's try something else so we are going to attempt to do this uh, engraving of the Mandalorian. It's not very big, and we're going to set our speed at 10 millimeters a second at 100% power. Hopefully it does the shading, and I'm going to have it doing it about 200 DPI. So this will take about two hours. Uh, so we'll see how this turns out. Alright guys, let's take a look at what we've got. For a first engraving, that looks pretty good. Let's move this, sorry, into a little better lighting so you can see that. Now I'm sure there's lots of adjusting that you can do. This is where I started and then actually ended up stopping the thing. So I ran this thing at about 30 millimeters a second. 
and I think it actually turned out very surprisingly good. And I did this at about 200 DPI. Well guys, I was actually pleasantly surprised on how well this did on engraving. Cutting, not so much, but I wouldn't expect it to cut gray with only five watts. Now there are higher watt versions available, but you're gonna have to pay a premium for them. And then you're getting in close to the prices of some of these CO2 lasers, which are really do better at cutting. They also do great in engraving, but they do better at cutting, but it is a bigger investment and does take up more space. That being said, I was impressed with the engraving quality. And that leads me to my next pro with this machine, how portable and small it is. You could take it anywhere with you. You could put it in your car, you could hang it on a wall, you could take it outside. Um, you really could put it anywhere and you're not limited by what you can fit inside the machining. Meaning a CO2 laser, you're really limited by the bed size. This, you can put it on top of anything and essentially engrave on it. Um, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, be sure and leave them below. Now, Adam Stack did send me this free of charge, and this is a sponsored video, but if you'd like to get your first laser, I would encourage you to check out the link below, and that will get you a discount off of your first laser. Um, I would also love to hear more from you and be sure and hit that bell icon because that lets you know all the content that I'm fixing to drop and there will be a bunch of new stuff, I think exciting stuff that you'll be interested in. So stay tuned for that. Thanks guys.